Chapter 12 A Woman Clothed with the Sun Revelation 12 verse 1 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. A great wonder in heaven, a great sign. John saw a vision, which he said was a great wonder. This is the first of only two times a wonder is seen in heaven. The second, and last time, is in verse 3 of this same chapter. The last wonder is not a great wonder, it is just pure evil. A woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, this woman is the nation of Israel. The sun represents Jacob, while Rachel is represented as the moon, as seen in Genesis 37 verses 9 to 11. Upon her head a crown of twelve stars, these crowns represent the twelve tribes of Israel. Jacob's name is changed to Israel in Genesis 32 verse 28. Notice the use of stars in Joseph's dream related to his brothers in Genesis 37. Genesis 37 verse 9, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Joseph told his dream to his family, and he said that he saw eleven stars make obeisance to him. We know that he meant his eleven brothers, because his father Jacob interprets the dream for us in the following verse. Genesis 37 verse 10, And he told it to his father, and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Revelation 12 verse 2, And she being with child cried, traveling in birth, and pain to be delivered. Being with child, this woman gives birth to many in the future tribulation period, not in the past. Israel will also be born again in a day according to Isaiah 66 verse 7 and 8 at the end of the tribulation period, before she can enter into her literal kingdom. Isaiah 66 verses 7 to 8, before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Since the woman here represents the nation of Israel, there is precedent here that the man-child that she bears also represents a future group of people that are males. They make up the first fruits of a nation. Revelation 12 verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Another wonder in heaven, the first, and only other time a wonder appears in heaven, is in Revelation 12 verse 1 above. The first one was a great wonder, this one was not so great. A great red dragon, this is the devil, and the seven heads with crowns, and ten horns, represent two things, the nations under his control during the tribulation period, and their leaders. Seven heads, a seven-headed dragon is what John sees, but the dragon is symbolic of Satan and his seven world rulers. The first head slash leader that ruled over Israel was Egypt, then Assyria, then Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome makes the sixth that was ruling at the time of John's writing the book of the Revelation. The seven heads, Revelation 17 verses 9 to 10, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. The seventh that is not yet come, and it will be the last which will continue for a short time in the tribulation period, before his kingdom is destroyed by Christ. Christ will establish an everlasting kingdom as seen in Nebuchadnezzar's vision. Daniel 2 verse 44, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Ten horns, these ten horns are later identified as kings who give their power to the beast. Revelation 17 verses 12 to 14, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is lord of lords, and king of kings, and they that are with him are called, and chosen, and faithful. Seven crowns, these crowns are on the seven heads, which denote that they have power given to them to rule at different times throughout history. Revelation 12 verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. The stars of heaven, one third of the angels are cast down to the earth by the dragon. Angels are depicted as stars in several places in the Bible. 
Luke 10 verses 18 to 19. Here John records a future event that will happen in the tribulation period. This is not telling about an event that already happened with Jesus' birth and Herod trying to kill Jesus, but a yet future event. The woman, this is the nation of Israel, and she is about to give birth here again to form the nucleus of a nation that will rule all nations in the kingdom, which thing the dragon hates, and he will try to stop. Her child, who is Israel's child that she gives birth to supernaturally in the tribulation period? The 144,000 witnesses. They are the first fruits of the next dispensation after the dispensation of grace is over. Their birth as the man-child occurs when they are sealed at the beginning of the tribulation period in Revelation chapter 7. Revelation 14 verse 4. Satan, the dragon, knows that the man-child will rule over the nations with a rod of iron along with Christ during the kingdom, so he wants to try to kill them. The man-child, however, is protected by God and caught up to New Jerusalem a while after they are sealed in their foreheads according to Revelation 7 verse 3. As soon as it was born, Jesus was not devoured as soon as he was born, he lived on earth for 33 years. The man-child comes into being quickly, and in just three and one-half years is caught up to heaven after its sealing mentioned in chapter 7. Revelation 12 verse 5 And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. A man-child. Now we see the nation of Israel giving birth to a man-child during the tribulation period that will rule and reign with Jesus Christ over all nations. Who is this man-child? Since the woman represents more than one person i.e., the nation of Israel, and the dragon represents more than just the devil, he represents the seven nations and ten kings. The man-child also represents more than just one person. The man-child represents the 144,000 male Jewish virgins in the first half of the tribulation period. To rule all nations with a rod of iron, Revelation 19 verse 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Revelation 2 verses 26 to 27, And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. Notice that it says that the man-child gets caught up unto God and his throne. This is the only mid-trib rapture found in the Bible and it is made up solely of the 144,000 male Jewish virgins. We as the church, the body of Christ, will already be in heaven for the past three and a half years. Read John's letter to Thyatira again and notice a comment about who besides Christ rules with a rod of iron during the kingdom. It is those that overcome in the first half of the tribulation period. Those that lay in the bed with the prophetess Jezebel during that day will also go into the great tribulation, which implies that those who do not will miss that time. The only way they can miss it is to die or be raptured. They are raptured. The man-child cannot be Jesus because the context is the tribulation period when the man-child is born and when he is caught up to heaven. Revelation 2 verses 26 to 27, And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Revelation 12 verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. The woman fled into the wilderness, the woman flees into the wilderness, and is protected there for three and a half years. This is also prophesied in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 32 verse 11 and Hosea 2 verses 14 to 19. God will protect those Jews in the future that go into the wilderness completely, where she hath a place prepared of God. The woman goes into the wilderness after her man-child is taken into heaven for the second half of the tribulation period after they are sealed in their foreheads. This is at the same time that Satan sets up his image in the temple after he and his fallen angels are cast out of heaven at the midpoint of the tribulation period, that they should feed her there. Who are the they that feed her there? Angels, Gentiles? The her, here is the woman that is identified as the nation of Israel above. Gentiles will also be blessed in the kingdom for obeying Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, by feeding Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. She will also eat the hidden manna in the wilderness once again. Revelation 2 verse 17 and Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. A thousand two hundred and three score days, forty and two months, or three and one half years. If God did it before for forty years, he can do it again for forty-two months. 
See also the feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000 in the Gospels, Matthew 16 verses 8 to 10, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 8, And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. There was war in heaven, this war did not take place around the throne of God in the third heaven, but rather in the second heaven. This is where the sun, moon, stars, and planets all reside. The second round of wars will take place here on the earth, and it will last for three and a half years. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael is one of the chief princes. He is Israel's prince. Daniel 10 verse 13 and 21. Two-thirds of the stars make up the angelic host that fight here with Michael against Satan and his third of the angelic host. Daniel 12 verse 1. And Jude 9. Principalities. Romans 8 verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Ephesians 3 verse 10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 6 verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Colossians 1 verse 16, for by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him, and for him. Colossians 2 verse 15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The dragon fought and his angels, this is the great red dragon that was first introduced in Revelation 12 verse 3. The dragon, and his angels, lose this fight to Michael, and his angels, and they are all cast out of the second heaven down to the earth. The dragon had one third of the angelic host follow him when he rebelled. Revelation 12 verse 4. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. They had been in places of authority in heaven, but now they are going to be removed from the offices they held. These positions were originally given to them by God before they followed Lucifer in his rebellion. There will be a shaking of the heavens at this time. Hebrews 12 verses 26 to 27, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things, that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Since that day, they have been usurping the places of authority they held, to do the bidding of the God of this world, Satan. These positions will be occupied by members of the body of Christ in the future. Revelation 12 verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20 verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. The great dragon was cast out. Isaiah 27 verse 1 is a prophecy about God punishing Leviathan, and slaying the dragon that is in the sea. Revelation 13 verse 1. That old serpent, this is a reference to the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 verses 1 to 14, called the devil, Diabolos in Greek. Satan is never called the devil in the Old Testament. Satan, the word is from the Hebrew language, and it means an adversary. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan drags his minions to earth to make war with Israel, which brought forth the man-child, and with the remnant of her seed. This begins the second half of the tribulation period, known as the Great Tribulation Period. Luke 10 verses 18 to 19, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Revelation 12 verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Revelation 12 verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his, Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now is come salvation, the heavens are delivered or saved from any more of Satan's influence in them and all of his principalities are cast down with him. The kingdom of our God, 
Now the heavens have been purged of all those angels that rebelled against him, and nothing will ever happen again in the heavens that is not something that is a part of God's plan. Power is then given to Christ in the heavens that was being usurped by Satan for the past 6,000 years for his evil plan. The kingdom reign of God can begin in the heavens at this point, but the earth must wait another three and a half years for it to exist down here. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, John is identifying for us who it is specifically that Satan is accusing before God day and night, it is his brethren, Israel, not believers in the body of Christ today. This happens at the halfway point of the tribulation period because we read that the kingdom of our God is come sometime soon after the casting out of Satan and his devils. Three and one half years will be a long time to those going through that period, but in God's timing, it is a short time. Luke 10 verses 18 to 19. When Satan and his fallen angels are cast out of heaven, all the thrones, principalities, and powers that they usurped after their rebellion will be occupied by the body of Christ. We have a heavenly destiny, while Israel has an earthly one in their kingdom, promised to them by the Father. Revelation 12 verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame him, the ham is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, 1 Peter 1 verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Revelation 7 verse 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony, these are Jewish believers in the tribulation period who are the overcomers mentioned in Revelation chapters 2 and 3 as well as other believers in those times from all over the world. These tribulation saints will lose their lives for their testimony for Christ. Matthew 10 verses 32 to 33 below. Matthew 10 verses 32 to 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. They loved not their lives unto the death, this is what Jesus meant by taking up their cross and following him in the Gospels. Mark 8 verses 34 to 38, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the Gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Revelation 12 verse 12 Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, the heavens will be purged of Satan and his forces forever. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, the devil will soon be cast into the bottomless pit for a thousand years, and he wants to kill as many people as possible. The first two woes are mentioned as having passed in Revelation 9 verse 12 and 11 14. The devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time, forty and two months. Revelation 12 verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, Jesus mentioned this to the seventy in the Gospel of Luke. Luke 10 verses 17 to 20, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, why not persecute the man-child as well? Because he cannot, the man-child was caught up into heaven, as we read earlier. We will read about him again in heaven, singing on Mount Shown, in Revelation 14 verses 1 to 5. This verse tells us that the devil will persecute the Jews unlike any other time in their history. Hitler was an evil man, but even he pales in comparison to the devil, who will try to finish what he inspired Hitler to do. Why does Satan hate the woman so much? Because of the man-child she produced, 
and the remnant of her seed will soon rule all nations with a rod of iron. The very same nations that for 6,000 years Satan had been ruling as the god of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 In whom the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Revelation 12 verse 14 And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Two wings of a great eagle. Israel is given the means to escape into a place of safety. The method of their flight is not as important as the fact that she is rescued. She may have to walk all the way there. Has this ever happened before in scripture? Yes, it has. Exodus 19 verse 4 Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Will he do it again? Yes, he will. Isaiah 40 verse 31 But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, and not be weary, and they shall walk, and not faint. That she may fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished. Isaiah 16 verses 1 to 5 Send ye the Lamb to the ruler of the land from Selah to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. For it shall be, that, as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the fords of Arnon. Take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday, hide the outcasts, Beray not him that wandereth. Let mine outcasts dwell with thee, Moab, be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the extortioner is at an end, the spoiler saith Seth, the oppressors are consumed out of the land. And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging, and seeking judgment, and hasting righteousness. A time, and times, and half a time, it will not be the Antichrist. He already rescued them from a previous invasion to gain their trust before committing the abomination of desolation. Isaiah 16 tells us that the remnant will flee into the land of Moab to be protected from the spoiler. God will provide manna from heaven again during the final three and a half years to feed his people once again in the wilderness. He did it for 40 years the first time, three and a half he can do with his eyes closed. He will probably send them some quail as well. Revelation 2 verse 17 From the face of the serpent See the face of the spoiler in Isaiah 16 verse 5 above. Revelation 12 verse 15 And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Here we read of one of the many ways that Satan will try to destroy the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Some have said that he will release the water from a dam in the north to accomplish this. The serpent is also the prince of the power of the air. He can stir up floods supernaturally. Daniel 9 verse 26 And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. If you have ever been in the Middle East when heavy rains come, whole areas can be wiped away because the ground is so hard and dry that it cannot absorb the water immediately and raging floods result. Revelation 12 verse 16 And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth, and swallowed up the flood. The dragon has a mouth, but the earth also has a mouth that God opens as he watches over Israel. God keeps his promises to Israel, even when she does keep hers, that she will never be totally destroyed by her enemies. Genesis 4 verse 11 And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Number 16, 30-32 But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up, with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. Revelation 12 verse 17 And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The dragon was wroth with the woman, Satan was angry at the nation of Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. During the tribulation period only a remnant of the Jews will keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. These are the ones Satan is the most concerned with, and whom he focuses his attack on, 
not the ones worshipping the Antichrist back at the temple. He already has them. Why not make war with her man-child? They were caught up to heaven, which keep the commandments of God. During the tribulation period, the believing Jews will keep the laws of Moses, i.e., the commandments. All of these religious groups that are trying to obey these commandments today, that are meant for Israel under the law, are being disobedient to God by not following Paul today. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy according to Revelation 19 verse 10. The gift of prophecy will be in use a lot during the time of Jacob's trouble, and it will give the remnant a greater understanding of all the things written in the Bible. Matthew 10 verses 32 to 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Chapter 13 A beast rise up out of the sea, Revelation 13 verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. I stood upon the sand of the sea, this represents the land of Israel. John was on the shoreline, facing the Mediterranean Sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. It has seven heads, but how is that possible? Each head is a leader of a Gentile kingdom that ruled over Israel and the world at one time. The beast is the same beast as the one that the woman is riding in Revelation 17. The beast is the Antichrist. Isaiah 27 verse 1, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Revelation 12 verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The beast is mentioned in chapter 12, and it is the world's kingdoms, with their leaders controlled by Satan himself, and it is the political system where the Antichrist himself will arise from, having seven heads, the first head-slash-leader that ruled over Israel was Egypt, then Assyria, then Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome makes the sixth that was ruling at the time of John's writing the book of the Revelation. One head is yet to come, who will set up his ten-nation confederacy during the tribulation period, three of them will be destroyed, and the number will become seven. Seven Gentile kingdoms will rule over the earth led by the god of this world Satan, through his self-appointed leaders that typify him, the last one he will literally possess at the midpoint of the tribulation period. It was mentioned in chapter 12 that this beast from the sea had only seven crowns, and now we see it with ten. These seven heads were the leaders of the seven Gentiles nations that would rule over Israel during what scripture calls the times of the Gentiles when Israel is not the head nation on the earth, as it will be in the kingdom. Luke 21 verse 24 And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Ten horns, a head, and a horn are different, they are not the same thing. The last group of ten nations that will come against Israel are the ten horns, and their leaders, that all give power to their leader. Seven crowns, each of the first six Gentile world leaders had a crown affiliated with their rule over Israel, and so does the seventh and final one. He is the last leader to rule over Israel, while she is in the wilderness. He is the Antichrist himself. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Notice at the end of verse 1, that it says that upon each of its heads were the name of blasphemy. Each of these kingdom's leaders had the name of blasphemy accredited to them. Satan is the controller of these leaders trying to set up his kingdom on the earth, which is opposed to God's kingdom, with Israel ruling under their Messiah. God has to intervene over and over again to deliver Israel from the beast in each of its seven manifestations over time. But there is coming a day when the stone that is cut without hands will crush all these kingdoms, and he rule with a rod of iron for a thousand years. Revelation 13 verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, 
and the dragon gave him his power, and his seed, and great authority. This is a reference to the beast mentioned a half century earlier in Daniel 7 verses 4 to 6. These beasts are explained to Daniel as four world empires, the last of which is Rome. They are in reverse order from Daniel 7 verses 4 to 6. Remember that two of these beasts had come and gone, Egypt and Assyria. By the time Daniel is with his countrymen in captivity in Babylon, like unto a leopard, Daniel 7 verse 6. This beast is diverse from it however, having the parts of three other kingdoms making up its being. His feet were as the feet of a bear, Daniel 7 verse 5. His mouth as the mouth of a lion, Daniel 7 verses 3 to 4. The dragon gave him his power, the him, here is the Antichrist, and his seed, as leader over a confederacy of nations, and great authority, ten other kings give their allegiance to him. Revelation 13 verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. One of his heads as it were wounded to death, this refers to the seventh king during the tribulation that comes against Israel in the middle of the tribulation period. The Antichrist here imitates the resurrection of Christ. Because of his, as it were, resurrection, he will fool the world into thinking he is the Christ. See the comments in Zechariah 11 below and notice the connection with Judas Iscariot. Zechariah 11 verses 12 to 17 And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So, they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized out of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver, and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For, lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock! The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened, and his deadly wound was healed. He was resurrected at the same time that Satan is cast down to the earth, and he enters into him and resurrects the beast slash antichrist who went into the bottomless pit when his deadly wound occurred, and all the world wondered after the beast, he does not have complete control over all the world, because God does not allow him to. Revelation 13 verse 4, And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? They worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Here we see some of the signs and wonders the devil will use to deceive the world at this time. The Antichrist will use his newfound fame to increase his power, and he will make war with Israel. Satan wants to get a foothold in the land, and then he reveals himself to Israel for who he really is, and believing Israel will be forced to flee into the wilderness. He gave power unto the beast, whose body was slain with a deadly wound, when he entered into him. He also had previously entered into Judas on the night of Jesus' betrayal in John 13 verses 2 and 27, Luke 22 verse 3, and John 6 verse 70. They worshipped the beast, they thought that no one could make war with him and win, because even if you were to kill him, he can just rise from the dead to fight you again. Revelation 13 verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemies. This beast is a prominent person in the push for peace in the Middle East at the beginning of the seven-year peace treaty, which he himself confirms with many according to Daniel. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. He is elected, or appointed, to office because of his efforts for peace, 
and then he turns his focus against Israel, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, three and one half years. Revelation 13 verse 6, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven, to blaspheme his name, the name of Jesus, and his tabernacle, the temple, and them that dwell in heaven, all the saints that have been martyred before that time. Revelation 13 verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations. It was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, since he cannot really defeat a believer on the battlefield, he will also attack them with his mark of the beast. And power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations, all the power that is given to the beast comes from Satan. Remember he is still the god of this world, he wields a lot of power. This is the power that he once offered to Jesus in the wilderness temptation, if he would just fall down and worship him. Matthew 4 verses 8 to 10 again, The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The temptation that Jesus endured, and was victorious over, will be offered to the world in the tribulation period. Most will succumb to it. Revelation 13 verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, anyone not taking the mark will be hunted down as an enemy of the one world government and destroyed. The world will be engulfed in great famine and wars, and this beast will unite them and promises a recovery if everyone will be a part of this new government by showing their allegiance by taking his mark. There will be no neutral position during this time. Either your name is in the book because you have trusted in Christ, or you worship the dragon, and the beast, and your name is not in the book. There is no half in, half out. If someone claims to be an atheist in those days, they are really on the devil's side, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Power is given to him over all whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. People who do not endure unto the end of the tribulation period, and who take the mark of the beast, had their name removed from the book of life of the Lamb. Their names were written there when they first believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. It is removed when they chose not to follow Christ any further. This is not possible in the dispensation of grace that we are in today, but it will be during the tribulation period. Revelation 21 verse 27 Slain from the foundation of the world, it was a part of God's plan from the foundation of the world that Christ should suffer at the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Luke 24 verse 7. Revelation 13 verses 9 to 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that letteth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. If any man have an ear, let him hear. This is speaking of believers who have discerning ears. He that letteth into captivity shall go into captivity. Just as Israel's rebellion against God caused God to bring Babylon down upon her to punish her so God will hear as well. Israel will flee for her own good, and God will supernaturally protect those who will flee. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Those who stay and fight will be destroyed by the sword. Those who flee are those who have ears to hear. The patience and the faith of the saints, these saints will have to be patient and trust in God to take care of them and to resist the mark of the beast to enter into their earthly kingdom. Revelation 1 verse 9 1 John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 2 verses 2 to 3 I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted, Revelation 3 verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation 14 verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. Another beast coming up out of the earth, Revelation 13 verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Another beast coming up out of the earth, the first we saw in verse 1 was a beast that rose up out of the sea. The sea often represents the Gentiles, 
But this one comes up from out of the earth, which is symbolic of coming from Israel, meaning he is a Jew. He had two horns like a lamb, because he looks like a lamb to the world, because he is a peacemaker. He spake as a dragon, he can rally the world with his fair speeches, that are filled with empty promises, and lies that damn the soul. Revelation 13 verse 12 And he exorciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. To worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, he is resurrected. Revelation 13 verse 13 And he doeth great wonders, so that he mocketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He doeth great wonders, spectacular signs that are supernatural, but demonic. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 6 to 12 And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. An image of the beast, Revelation 13 verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. In the sight of the beast, his power comes from the first beast, and it appears he must be in a close proximity to him to perform his miracles. An image of the beast, this worshipping of an image will repel any Jewish ideas that this man might still be their Messiah as they flee to the wilderness. Israel will realize that their true Messiah came 2,000 years ago. Revelation 14 verses 9 to 11, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Revelation 15 verse 2 And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Revelation 16 verse 2, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Revelation 19 verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20 verse 4 And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The wound by a sword. Notice we see here that beast will be wounded by a sword during a coup attempt, or in a battle, and Satan uses that to fool the world. Satan is the great imitator. Zechariah 11 verse 17 Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Revelation 13 verse 15 And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. He will be accompanied by the Antichrist, who will perform many miracles, such as causing fire to come down from heaven to deceive the people into following him. The religious leader will make an image of the political leader, and cause that as many as that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He will demand that everyone pay homage to, or worship, the image of the beast, like in Daniel chapter 3. The mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verse 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. A mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, other versions say, on their right hand, or on their foreheads. You could make a mistake reading the wrong version of the Bible in those days, 
that will cost you your soul for eternity. In and on are two totally different words, which mean different things. Revelation 13 verse 17 And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. No man might buy or sell. This mark is to gain financial power. The love of money will cause many to take the mark. The mark, this could possibly be a barcode with just lines on it. The lines represent numbers. The name of the beast, this second option is the most mysterious, but it has the same consequences. Damnation. This is the sin mentioned in Hebrews that cannot be repented of. The number of his name, the value of this man's name. See also the number of a man below. Revelation 13 verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Here is wisdom. Revelation 17 verse 9. Let him that hath understanding, a believer who understands biblical numerology, count the number of the beast, the number is 666. It is the number of a man, man was created on the sixth day. Genesis 1 verses 26 to 31. 603 score and 6. This is an old English way of saying 666. A score of years equals 20 years. Three scores is three times 20, or 60. Notice in verse 17 that people could have any one of the three identifiers, and not just one. Some will identify with the devil by having his name on them, while others will choose the mark, and others will choose the number. Each one will damn their souls to hell. To determine the numerical value of a person's name, you must first assign a numeric value to each letter in the alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet actually assigns numerical values to each Hebrew letter. You cannot figure out who the Antichrist is before the rapture occurs. Only when the Holy Spirit raptures us out can he be revealed. Alphanumeric chart A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, D equals 4, E equals 5, F equals 6, G equals 7, H equals 8, I equals 9, J equals 10, K equals 20, L equals 30, M equals 40, N equals 50, O equals 60, P equals 70, Q equals 80, R equals 90, S equals 100, T equals 200, U equals 300, D equals 400, W equals 500, X equals 600, Y equals 700, Z equals 800. Remember Greek and Hebrew are not English, and just because a person's name equals 666 in one language does not make it equal that in another. Today, almost everything that we buy now has a UPC code on it. Each barcode has two series of numbers on them divided by two long thin lines. These two lines serve as a signal to a barcode scanner to break what it is reading momentarily and then to start scanning the second half of the UPC symbol. The two sets of identical longer lines at the beginning of the barcode and at the end also serve as signals to the scanner to start scanning and to stop scanning. It is no coincidence that the numerical equivalent of these lines are the number 6. On each product we buy, there is the number 666. So, should we stop buying things because they have 666 on them? No. The mark that the Bible is talking about is one that is implanted in our forehead or in our right hand. Today, new technology has been developed with 5G that has made it so much easier to track people. A person who reads a modern Bible during the tribulation period will determine that he can take this mark, because in his Bible it says the mark will be on the hand, or on the forehead, instead of in them. This will damn a person to hell eternally. Revelation 13 says that everyone who does not take the mark will be killed, but it also says in later chapters that everyone who receives the mark will die and spend eternity in hell. According to the book of Revelation the mark of the beast is not mandatory until the midpoint of the tribulation period, but nowhere does it say that it cannot be in place prior to that point on a limited basis. We only know that it is optional up until the midpoint of the tribulation. I believe we are living in some of the most interesting times the world has ever seen or will see. The six different Roman numerals I equals 1, V equals 5, X equals 10, L equals 50, C equals 100, M equals 501 plus 5 plus 10 plus 50 plus 100 plus 500 is equal to 666, what a coincidence.